First up, we had Kenya's MPC hold its meeting yesterday, uh, slashing that interest rate pretty unexpectedly uh, to 6%. Uh, what have you made of that move? I think the move makes sense to me. Uh, if you look at uh, the bank lending this year, I just noticed that uh, bank lending has been up 4%. Uh, for the first four months uh, of 2010. And then even looking at the half-year results that uh, the banks have released to date, I've noticed that lending hasn't picked up as much as was uh, initially expected. Therefore, I think there was need for some stimulus uh, for CBK to take some moves to improve the liquidity in the economy. I also think that uh, downward risks to the economy have increased with uh, talk of uh, Ladina uh, dry weather conditions developing. Therefore, I think it was uh, a sound move by the central bank I expected a rate cut of probably 50 basis points at best, mm -hmm. but uh, 75 bips is even better news, and uh, I think it's a step in the right direction. Before we go on to implications for the commercial banks themselves, let's take a look at uh, at the context within which this uh, the slash was uh, induced. I mean, on the backdrop of low inflation and growing confidence in the economy itself, what's your outlook on those fronts? Uh, my outlook uh, is pretty similar to the central banks. I think uh, we're expecting a stronger shilling uh, over the next month or so uh, following the referendum. And uh, with uh, worries in the eurozone calming down, we expect that uh, dollar-denominated imports such as oil uh, will experience uh, downward pressure from the uh, strength and shilling. Um, I also think that uh, we are now heading into the Kenya's main harvest season which is the August, October, September timeframe. And therefore, with the bumper harvest that we've been having to date, uh, I, I share the view that uh, there is a little upside risk to inflation uh, over the next quarter or so. However, up following the quarter, there, there could be some increased uh, upside risk to inflation, uh, especially if we have the dry weather mm -hmm. conditions uh, developing uh, in the country. Uh, as you were mentioning earlier, a lot of the economic growth picture is dependent on those credit lines starting to ease up. What do you see being the implications as far as commercial banks' lending rates are concerned? Because even though we have seen some of these banking players uh, come to the party lowering interest rates, they haven't been at the rate that has been anticipated uh, by the Central Bank of Kenya, and they have been pretty resistant uh, to lowering further. That's a very valid observation, and uh, I expect uh, more of the same to continue. Uh, we are still seeing banks in Kenya displaying considerable risk aversion. I think uh, the worries and concerns in the Eurozone are playing a considerable role in that. And uh, what I would say is that I think the central bank uh, should attem attempt other opportunities to stimulate credit uh, to the real sector. Uh, the central bank had spoken about uh, taking initiatives such as uh, the using the development banking products, introduction of development banking products in the country. I also think some form of credit enhancement uh, to the private sector may be necessary. And uh, really what we need is innovative solutions to boost credit in the economy. Uh, we don't get stuck in a situation whereby we are doing the same thing and uh, expecting different results. So a very valid observation that I agree with. And uh, hopefully the central bank has shown uh, initiative in terms of uh, taking steps to solve the problems or to boost the Kenya's econ economy and uh, I hope that they'll continue the same vein and come up with uh, additional yeah. innovative solutions. Uh, the liquidity, the cut in the rates is, is really not adequate at this point in time. We've seen it really doesn't work. Well, while we need innovative solutions on that front, I mean, with banks coming under extreme pressure to lower their interest rate in tandem with the central bank, I mean, if we look at recent uh, earnings and uh, the, the, the emphasis that's been placed on interest income specifically and the role it's played as far as earnings were concerned, what is your your outlook for these players moving forward where they may well now be in a position forced into a corner to innovate in terms of their revenue streams moving forward? We've seen a considerable innovation in the banking sector this year. Uh, one of the areas that the banks are looking at is uh, technology. Uh, a very good case in point is Equity Bank. Mm -hmm. They have entered into this partnership with Safaricom whereby they are launching this mobile phone based banking product known as Mkesho. Uh, they are also using uh, the mobile money transfer uh, system M-Pesa and uh, now equity bank customers can withdraw uh, money, uh, can send money via M-Pesa using their ATM cards, they can withdraw money using the same. So what we've seen is uh, an emphasis on growing non-funded income. Uh, a lot of banks have also increased uh, their bond trading revenues with uh, bond trading volumes in Kenya picking up following the introduction of the automated teller system. We've seen a number of banks uh, report quite impressive uh, uh, gains on uh, bond yeah. trading desks 
And therefore, that's, those, these are some of the strategies that the banks are applying, mainly focusing on non-funded income and in technology the, plays. In the meantime, on the earnings scene, we saw Kenya's Ken Kobo out with numbers yesterday. H1 profit uh, coming to the fore as it raised sales in its export market specifically and uh, seeming to be pretty optimistic about the second half as well. There are some concerns, though, because there are inefficiencies of both the pipeline and uh, refinery in Kenya right now, and that continues to play. So to what extent is the market pricing in that risk despite the optimism that the CEO displayed yesterday? The market has been displaying a relative caution on uh, Kenal Kobil's share price, especially even uh, aside from the refinery efficiency issues at the refinery, there is this uh, a dispute that Kenal Kobil is having with the Kenya Petroleum uh, Refinery Limited whereby uh, the refinery has terminated the crude processing agreement that it has with Kenol Kobil. And uh, recently we've also seen the Ministry of Energy uh, instruct the Energy Regulatory Commission to uh, bar Kenol Kobil from importing uh, oil stocks. Uh, these are very serious concerns. Uh, we like Kenol Kobil as a stock. We think um, it's attractively priced. However, the refinery is crucial to its yeah. operations. It's the only refinery in Kenya. And uh, the market is uh, quite accurately uh, displaying some risk aversion regarding this talk until the dispute with KPRL gets uh, sorted out.